Hello, I'm Guk Chin Lim from Hamam Church in Chinchun. I want to share my testimony today about how I was captivated by rock music, where it led me and how I got out of it and became a witness of the resurrection. I was not a well-known rock musician, but I thank the Lord for that time in my life, because that was how I came to believe in Him. This is my testimony. Due to financial difficulties, I had to give up my first dream of becoming a baseball player. This made me discouraged, so I was full of complaints about the world ever since I was a child. In high school, I found heavy metal music as a means to escape, and the way to let out steam about my dissatisfaction and the pressure of school. I was totally immersed in this music, so I joined a band as a vocalist. I listened to heavy metal every day, practiced, and dreamt about playing big concerts. As I was getting more into this music, I wanted to grow my hair long, indulge in the world, and become a rock star living an extravagant life. This is how I naturally fell into alcohol, smoking, and violence. This distanced me from student life, and I resolved to be a famous rock star and live a cool life. While I was deeply into metal, something started happening. I frankly had nightmares and heard voices in my ear. There were usually about three voices, laughing at me and saying, Look at this stupid loser. He doesn't even know what he's doing. I heard these kinds of things several times a month. One day, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a black object that looked like a bat. It was sitting next to me. Then I flew to the top of the wardrobe, and it was looking down at the room. I thought I was seeing things, but after I met Jesus and found out about the spiritual world, I realized that it was an evil spirit that had caught a hold of me. As soon as I entered a university, I joined a pretty well-known rock band on campus. I knew what the audience wanted at a metal concert and what I could do to look cool. So, whenever I had a concert, I sang like a person who was on drugs, headbanging, <laughs> at all the right times and owning the stage. And people who saw our shows really liked us. <laughs> we did a number of big and small concerts. We would play a range of things, from the 70s hard rock to modern style of metal. That was popular at the time, and people thought we were fresh. We grew popular by word of mouth. After that, I was scouted by another band with the best players from the region, a drummer with great speed and accuracy, a king bass player, and twin lead guitars with great heavy backing tones. We played in a rock festival twice with other bands from five different universities. My vocals were influenced by Rob Halford of Judas Priest and also Ronnie James Deal. <laughs> My vocal range went from the middle register up to the high G, which is three octaves up in the treble staff and my voice had a strong vibration. <laughs> Both my head voice and nasal voice were like a high-pitched screaming and growling combined with the typical heavy metal vocal style. Our set list included Halloween's 13-minute song from Keeper of the Seven Keys, which is basically speed metaling and requires playing for a long time with superb performance technique. And we played classic heavy metal stuff like Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, and the crowd was really into it. When we performed two concert finales like this, we started to get noticed for our skills. The pleasure of being on stage, the screams from the audience, the feeling of being a star, and especially the girls who came to see me after the concert was over. These things made me become addicted to music. Nobody ever questioned me about enjoying these things as a rock musician. But when the concert was over, I was overtaken by a sense of futility emptiness, and a unique kind of loneliness that can only be found hidden underneath the flashy rock lifestyle. There are many cases of famous rock stars who committed suicide because of loneliness or died from drug or alcohol overdose. The content of the songs are also mainly about suicide, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, obscenity, violence, and wild parties. When I looked at the lives of people in famous bands or saw their concerts, the kinds of things in the lyrics really came out in their lives. And people who see these things accept the way they are 
and follow them without any resistance. I was like that too. <laughs> but when I was about to graduate, my younger brother, who was in medical school, saw me living this way and must have felt sorry for me. So one day, he told me to believe in Jesus. When I heard him say that Jesus rose from the dead, I thought, how can someone studying modern medicine believe in something so insane? <laughs> so I got angry. But my younger brother had always been a more profound thinker than I was, and he had always been the model of decency and excellence. So, although I didn't believe in Jesus myself, I decided to respect my brother's faith. After graduating, I got a job, but I only thought of it as temporary work to support my music. I became frequently confused because of the gap between my identity as a rock musician and reality. All I thought about was saving up money so that I could escape this tedious life. I looked like a person who couldn't adjust to reality at all. I was an office employee, but I wore sunglasses and bracelets, wore a ponytail or permed my long hair, <laughs> and wore earrings and boots to work. <laughs> I didn't care about proper work attire because I identified myself as a rock musician. I thought there was nothing wrong with that. When I finished work, I drank with people to forget about this life. Then one day, I heard that one of Korean's famous rock bands from the early 2000s was looking for a new vocalist, so I auditioned, but unsuccessfully. After that, I experienced more frustration and decided to quit my life as a professional rock musician. Then I began to drink more, as my reality and my ideals grew further apart. And as I began to feel extreme depression and pessimism, the main emotions provided by the rock music that had driven my life, I decided that I should commit suicide. I was no longer a rock musician, and all that remained for me was a predictable, boring, and routine life. One morning, I thought of a spot at the Han River in Jamzil, and I imagined myself drowning myself after drinking. So after work that day, I put two bottles of vodka in my bag and went to the spot at the Han River. When I arrived, I drank the two bottles of vodka. Then after five minutes, I started to feel dizzy and my body started to shake. I was stumbling about and I was about to jump into the water. But suddenly I thought of my younger brother who would tell me about Jesus. So I called him to say goodbye to him. My brother felt something off in my voice. So he said, Gukjin, where are you? And without thinking, I said, Oh, I'm at the Han River. Then my brother said, What are you doing there? Please, just go home right now. When I heard him say that, I thought of my mother, who would be crying at home. So I got myself away from the water. Then I screamed and wept like a wild animal. <laughs> In December of 2004, my mother was diagnosed with cancer and was told she had one year to live. As the eldest, all I had done was give her grief. When I thought about my mother passing away, I hit rock bottom. There was nothing I could rely on in this world. But one night in January of 2005, I took out the Bible that had been lying on a shelf covered with dust. It had suddenly came to mind, and I read the book of Mark. In March 1614, I read, Later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. As I was reading this verse, there was a voice thundering in my heart. You wicked one! You don't believe even when you hear my words! I realized that this was what my brother had been talking about. This was meeting the risen Jesus. I can see the risen Jesus who was speaking to me. Jesus had risen from the dead. But I was a wicked man who didn't believe, just like the disciples, even though I've seen the evidence of his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus was a fact that had clear evidence. Through the risen Jesus, I met God, who is alive even today. When I met the risen Jesus, all of the words in the Bible I had read before came together. Amen. Jesus, who died on the cross and rose again, was God. Amen.
God was alive, but I had lived in depravity and however I wanted to, right in front of him. And it became so clear to me that this was wrong, and I repented in tears. After that, the darkness that had made me depressed while I was playing rock music went away, and light came into my heart. From then on, I decided that I would only live for Jesus and no longer follow this world. Amen. The first thing I did was go to the Hamam small church meeting that my brother had told me about. Before, I felt like the church people had nothing to do with me. I thought they were weird people who only talked about the resurrection all the time. But after meeting the risen Jesus, I felt like they were my family. I was deeply moved by the fact that they were my eternal family, who received the risen Jesus as Lord, just like me. And I love talking about God and praising the risen Lord with my church members. Amen. When I met the risen Lord and surrendered to Him and started going to Hamam Church, I cannot forget how the pastor hugged me with joy. I felt like it was Jesus embracing me. After I met the risen Jesus, the unseen spiritual world became real to me. I realized that the depression and feelings of despair that had ruled my life when I was a musician were from the evil spirits who were giving me those thoughts and feelings. Also, all the rock music in the world without Jesus looks cool and exciting. Even though I used to think that, the music seemed compassionate because it expressed honesty about the nature of man. I was able to discern things spiritually as it became clear to me through the Bible that the world is under the control of the evil one. I started to listen to Christian music rather than heavy metal music that I had always listened to. I started to read the Bible wherever I went. When listening to Christian music on my way from Seoul to Chinchon, I found myself shedding tears as I was moved by the love of God. These are things that I've never imagined before. I started to share the risen Jesus at work, too. People gave me strange looks. <laughs> because I used to drink and smoke a lot when I was into rock music, but I was suddenly sharing about the risen Jesus. When I thought of Jesus, how people looked at me didn't matter. One day, I heard a testimony from a brother who made a PowerPoint presentation about the gospel and shared it at work. I downloaded the PowerPoint and decided to share the gospel after a meeting at work. Even if the director of the headquarters, my boss, and the staff members might insult me for it. When I shared the good news, they laughed at me and made sarcastic comments. But I was full of joy. In the past, I would have fought with them. I couldn't believe how much I had changed. Amen. However, even though I had met the risen Jesus, I still had habits from my old self. Those were drinking and smoking. Also, Whenever I shared the gospel with people around me, there was a part of my heart that still felt hesitant. About three months after I met Jesus, I was still chewing gum on my way to small church or worship service because I wanted to get rid of the cigarette smell. But at some point after I met the risen Jesus, I became ashamed about my life of drinking and smoking before the Lord. So I prayed, Lord, I don't want to drink or smoke in front of you. Please help me quit. A few weeks later, something unbelievable happened. It was a day when the whole department got together. I was under a lot of stress, so I was not going to drink. But people kept asking me to drink, so I drank just one shot. But eventually, I drank to the point of passing out. <laughs> the next morning, I lit a cigarette to smoke on the rooftop as usual. But my head hurt so badly that I couldn't smoke so I came back down to the office. Then I didn't think about smoking even after a quarter of the day had passed, so I decided to wait and smoke the next day. But when the next day came, I didn't think about smoking then either. And then several days passed, and amazingly, I hadn't thought about smoking or drinking. So, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I was able to quit smoking and drinking. Amen. After I met the risen Jesus, my mother who had been a Buddhist all her life, accepted Jesus in 2005, a year before she had passed away. She started going to a church in her neighborhood and met my future mother-in-law in the church, and that's how I was introduced to my wife. 
Before I met Jesus, I thought it was the most important for a woman to be beautiful and have a good job. <laughs> but after I met Jesus, I knew that if I couldn't be one with the person through the gospel of the resurrection, the relationship didn't stand a chance. So as soon as I met my future wife, I eagerly shared with her about the risen Lord. And when she listened to me without any hesitation, she looked so beautiful. So I kept meeting with her while praying to God, and we decided to get married after three months. After we got married, my wife told me that. When I shared the gospel with her, she thought I was kind of weird. <laughs> but she didn't dislike it, and she wanted to keep meeting me. I believed that the Lord had changed her sight. Now my wife and I have been living a life of faith together, and God gave us a really pretty daughter as a gift. God made us into a family who share the gospel together. Also, God opened the way for me to be an English teacher who can freely share the gospel of the resurrection to students at my work. I teach English now at a college prep school where I share the gospel with students. Amen. Because the mission of Hamam Church is the same as my mission, which is to testify to the resurrection by the power of the Holy Spirit. Being together with my church is my greatest happiness and greatest joy. Amen. Lastly, I want to give all the glory to God, who pulled me out of rock music and the depression and despair it led me to. I love you, Lord, and I thank you. <laughs>